Hello crafty friends, I'm Lien from Studio Kato and I'm so happy to be back on the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel today with another floral card. Today I am showcasing the Medicine Die Set by Crafty Meraki, uh, which are these gorgeous little violets. Um, I think they're called violets, we call them violets. <laughs> I think <laughs> I'm very bad with florals, but I think they're very pretty anyway. And my mom has some uh, flowers like this in her garden so I figured I would color them like this uh, or like those <laughs> um, and those are a violet color but they're a little bit more periwinkle towards the edges and the thing with ink blending is you tend to just grab your inks and limit yourself to the colors you have available to you but if you layer them up, you can create different colors. You're essentially mixing them on your paper. So right now I'm just using the colors as they come. I am going from the lightest shade in the Pink Fresh Studio purple range to the darkest. And then I'm layering up some Stargazer, which is the darkest blue, just to deepen up that violet in the middle. Now, to create that periwinkle shade towards the edges, I am also going to layer on a blue because periwinkle is something between purple and blue. It depends on the light, <laughs> I think. So I am layering on some slumber, which is a warmer blue, but the lightest one in the Pink Fresh Studio range. So I'm just layering that on all over the flower and that will dull that purple down a little bit just to create a more periwinkle shade. And this is the beauty of dye inks. Because they're translucent, they show the color that is underneath. You can't really use them on darker cardstock because of this, but you can mix and match your colors uh, or mix your colors on top of the page. And that creates new shades entirely, which makes ink blending so much more fun and so much more exciting in my opinion. So for the stems, I am layering a couple of greens together and um, some teal maybe even. No, I stuck to the greens for these actually. These are Grassy Knoll, probably Emerald City and Evergreen. But I know for these leaves, I am also going to use an even darker shade later. I'm going to go back to that stargazer blue because laying, layering dark blue on dark green is just going to darken up the green. Uh, dark blue is a very very useful shade if you want to create shadows or very intense shading. So I highly recommend checking out this stargazer blue ink. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous shade of blue all on its own but it's perfect for shading as well. I am, I have die cut a couple of pieces here and I created this window um, and that is where I am just blending over the edges to set it a little bit more apart from the rest of that because I die cut the Dancing Feathers A2 size die by Crafty Muraki that is that gorgeous stitched pattern you see all over the card so I die cut that first then I die cut a random window die I had in my stash from that and um, I just wanted to inlay that, but with some dimension. So the frame is all propped up on foam tape and the window is inlaid, but I wanted to add some, some shading. So I chose some mint colors and some teal colors, soft teal colors to go around the edges there. Now to arrange all of these florals, I fussed around with this quite a while. I always <laughs> like this part the best. So I spend a lot of time on it usually. And because I created that window, I can really play with the dimension here. So I'm going to prop the flowers up on some foam tape, uh, even propping them up on top of that frame so it's very dimensional. My cards are always very, very thick. Um, I often pay for extra postage just because they're so thick, but I don't mind. I really, really love the look of dimension on my cards. So you don't really have to do this, but I just love it. it I love the drop shadows it creates on your card. It's just so wonderful. Now, uh, I layered up those leaf dies, so they are actually a couple of layers of paper thick. I think the leaves are two layers thick and the flowers are three layers thick. So just extra die cuts, and I do this before ink blending because that makes them a lot more sturdy to handle and a lot more easier to ink blend them. 
So I played around a lot with dimension on this card, but I also realized that I didn't have a sentiment yet. And I figured the arch would be the perfect place for it, the arch of that window, and I'm going to show you my favorite trick for that. I'm using the Enjoy the Little Things stamp by uh, Crafty Meraki. This is from the Nutty Friends stamp set. I'm placing my acrylic block on top of the curve there and curving the stamp along that. The stamp side is facing up. So I am just going to turn my acrylic block around. And because that curve is symmetrical, the stamp will fit in that curve perfectly, even though we curved it along the wrong side of the of the acrylic block and the stamp or the sentiment was facing backwards. Um, I hope that makes any kind of sense. <laughs> it's very hard to explain, but just turn your, don't try to curve the sentiment on top of the paper. It's going to be fussy and it's not going to work really well, but doing it this way on a symmetrical curve is perfect, super, super easy and a really great way to stretch your sentiment stamps. I'm just stamping this in VersaFine Onyx Black. I did take a risk there because my card was already assembled, but I am pretty good at stamping with an acrylic block because I only have had my Misty for less than a year now, so I really don't mind using an acrylic block. Um, yeah, but if you are a little bit smarter than me, just plan your cards better and stamp the sentiment before you're assembling your card. Now I did think the violets looked a little bit plain and I wanted to add some yellow to the center, but obviously I can layer on yellow ink on top of that purple. That's not going to, going to work because dye inks are translucent, but acrylic is perfectly, perfectly opaque. So I just took some gold acrylic paint that I had in my sesh and pretty much dry brushed it on. I did thin it out with some water first and then brushed it on with a pretty dry paint brush with a very little amount of paint on there and that makes it blend out into that purple really prettily. I am also adding a pearl. This is a matte gold pearl from Pinkfresh Studio and the gems all around, I completely forgot to mention, are my favorite gems of the latest release. These are Mystic Topaz and they're so so gorgeous. These medicine dyes are quite intricate and you can actually pop up those uh, little petals in the center of the flower. So I just took a needle tool, a pointy tool to just prop them up. And that's it. Really, really easy, very dimensional and a lot of ink blending, but that is the easiest way to color a die cut in my opinion. So I really love this. Um, I love that sentiment trick. I hope you try it out. It's so easy and it really stretches your sentiment stems. I hope you've checked out the new Crafty Meraki release by now. There are some awesome, awesome floral dyes in there, but amazing leaf dyes as well. And I love a good leaf dye. Um, I actually have a video up on my channel, which is part of the Crafty Meraki Hop, where you can win um, the entire release or a $100 gift card from Crafty Meraki. So I will leave the YouTube, the YouTube Hop linked in the description below so you can participate. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.